kami percaya, visi tersebut dapat diraih dengan kemitraan antara unsur dengan lembaga-lembaga yang memiliki harapan yang sama untuk menciptakan masa depan yang lebih baik. Didukung dengan sistem digital yang sudah terintegrasi, Universitas Jenderal Sudirman mampu memberikan pelayanan yang ramah dan cepat bagi seluruh sivitas akademika. Dengan sarana dan prasarana yang berkualitas, serta tenaga pendidik dan kependidikan yang kompeten, kami bersinergi membangun reputasi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The distinguished rector of Universitas Jenderal Sudirman, and today is represented by Vice Rector for Student and Alumni Affairs, the Honorable Dean and all of Vice Deans Faculty of Biology, the Honorable Professor Asa Kawatakesi, the Honorable Director of International Nursing Office, the Chairman of Summer Course Committee, students from Chiba University, all of the invited guests, and all of meeting participants. Ladies and gentlemen, best wishes to all of us. On behalf of the Universitas Jenderal Sudirman, I would like to welcome all of the guests for attending the closing ceremony and presentation for Jenderal Sudirman University Summer Course on the Tropical Biodiversity Discovery 2023, organized by Faculty of Biology and International Relations Office, Tuesday, August 29, 2023. And also, to the delegation from Chiba University, especially for welcome to Purwakarta and welcome to Universitas Jenderal Sudirman. And next agenda, singing national anthem Indonesia Raya. Ladies and gentlemen, please kindly to stand. Reportation from Chairman of Summer Course Committee for Mr. Romanus Edi Prabowo, PSD. The time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable Vice Rector for Student Affairs, Alumni and Corporation, on behalf of the Rector of UNSUD, who cannot be presented today uh, to other uh, appointment. The Dean of the Faculty of Biology, uh, all the Vice Dean, and also the coordinator of the Biology Undergraduate Program, 
and also the International Relation Office uh, Director, Pa uh, Erwin, and also the staff of the International Relation Office. And so, the internal program of the faculty of biology and and also the participant from Chiba University. At the beginning of last year, Professor Watano Sensei from Chiba University uh, desire, uh, expressed the desire for collaboration between Chiba University, uh, Brin, and UNSUD regarding the engagement of Chiba University students in activities outside campus and abroad. So uh, in Chiba University, this is a requirement to uh, engage activities outside campus and also abroad. And however, due to the COVID pandemic restriction, Brin uh, couldn't participate directly, but still uh, supported this collaboration. This was followed by a visit from a Rector of UNSUD to Chiba University the end of this last year and solidifying this collaboration with an excellent program model which UNSU uh, student can study at Chiba University and also a Chiba University student can engage activities with UNSU. Eventually UNSU and Chiba University design joint activities under the The first general Sudirman University the summer course on tropical biodiversity discovery 2023. This program initially planned only for 10 Chiba University students, but due to the uh, highest interest, so we doubled the quota of the participation become 20 students. This activity, including a visit to Bogor Zoological Museum, herbar uh, Herbarium Borgoriensis, and followed by five days activities at Karimun Jawa, and also to Botanical Garden of Baturaden and Segaranakan Cilacap, it's for one day. Despite a relatively short adaptation period, leading to various health discomfort, uh, uh, headaches, fevers, stomach aches, and also sensei got stung by bees, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> but he didn't, he didn't, how to say, increase the enthusiasm and joy of the participation in this program. The coral and coral pieces observation, invertebrate studies, releasing uh, turtles, baby turtles and bird observation, which could not be carried out to the rough wave uh, in Karimun Jawa. It's about uh, two meters of wave. Yeah. So we extend our gratitude to the support from all parties, including University for the successful execution of this program. A special thank to the team and student volunteers May this program bring benefit for all parties, especially to the participating students. We hope this initiative can continue in the coming years, uh, even with better planning and execution. We apologize for shortcoming. This concludes my remarks. Uh, may we all remain in good health and prosperity. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Romanus. Please give applause for our, uh, Mr. Romanus. Next session is a uh, from Chiba University for Professor Asakawa Takeshi. The time is yours. Thank you. 
participants of participate the uh, field training program uh, uh, arranged by your university. So, uh, this uh, leaves and tropical fishes. For the most students, it was the first experience of Shinokeren. So they are very fortunate uh, to train uh, in Indonesia with beautiful corals and uh, tropical fishes. Oh. Um, they also experienced uh, the release of baby sea turtles. Uh, it is almost impossible in Japan uh, to release the baby turtles. So uh, it must be the great experience uh, and uh, have been unforgettable to them. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we also uh, observed uh, tropical mangrove and uh, planted um, the Brugilia gymnoriza. So uh, the mangroves, which are much more diverse than those of Japan, uh, was a great experience of biodiversity. And the plant, uh, I thought, And we also learn about SDGs or nature positive by planting mangrove. So we, we, we would like to thank uh, Professor Romy and Elvin and the member of the faculty uh, for organizing this great program. We would like to uh, thank also the students uh, who supported this program. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Chiba University is now preparing to host students from your university. Uh, we are looking forward to the exchange of students and hope the uh, further development of uh, a uh, joint program or collaboration. Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much again for organizing this exciting program. And uh, thank you very much also for this great ceremony. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Professor Rasakawa Takesi. And the following agenda is speech from Rector of Universitas Dr. Sudirman, when today is represented by Vice Rector for Student and Alumni Affairs, Bapak Dr. Norman Ari Prayoga, and also officially close at the summer program. The time is your. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam, salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan, Rahayu. Uh, yang saya hormati, The Honorable, The Dean of LG Fakulti, Professor Dr. Tuhun, ya. Vice Dean of the Faculty of Biology, Good morning. <laughs> Professor Asakawa Sensei, from Chiba University. Coordinator of Study Program of Biology. Uh, Director and Coordinator of International Relations Officer, uh, Dr. Erwin. And Dr. Romanus Edi Prabowo and the committee. Uh, who has helped his collaboration between UNSUT and Chiba University, uh, student of Chiba University, and student of 
Jenderal Sudirman University and of course all the committee and all participants. Good morning. Good morning. Minasan Ohaya Semas. So since maybe 10 years ago I was studying Nara so until now uh, every year I go to Nara so I I always meet up uh, people <laughs> I work with uh, Mr. Sensei from Nara so maybe this remind me for 10 years <laughs> uh, in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty and most merciful may his blessing be upon the prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his descendant. On behalf of Rector General Sudirman University, I would like to thanks to Dean of the Biology Faculty, uh, also Dr. Romanus and also Dr. Erwin, because uh, have helped this uh, collaboration between General Sudirman University and Siba University. Uh, I hear that. Uh, the student of Chiba University have a new experience in snorkeling or release the baby turtle. I think it's a very nice activity. Uh, hopefully our student uh, in General Suriban uh, University also have a good experience to go to Chiba University. I'm also especially thanks to Sakawa Sensei. Thank you very much for your uh, kindness to have a uh, collaboration with us. And uh, I'm very happy this, this morning we have a uh, closing ceremony and uh, we have a uh, program, summer program of the Tropical Biodiversity Discovery 2023. Uh, our rector has uh, another appointment with the uh, Mr. Ainung from Inspector General, Gen Inspector General Indonesia. So they have uh, go to the another meeting. Of 10 diploma program. And then we have uh, 39 undergraduate programs, uh, five professional programs, 23 master programs, and one specialist, sub-specialist program, and seven doctor program. One is from biology faculty. Uh, General Sudirman University also have wide experience in research on rural resources development as well as community service. Uh, this program, this summer program, align with our university vision for the development of rural resources as well as tropical biodiversity. So uh, this. Uh, vision of my university sensei is to develop on the rural uh, in this area. So one of the important things about the uh, tropical biodiversity topic. Therefore, tropical biodiversity discovery is vital for conservation, scientific, understanding ecosystem, ecosystem process, and improving human well-being. Uh, given the rapid environmental change occurring in these regions, documenting and protecting their biodiversity becomes even more urgent. So uh, this university supports all academic into initiative, including summer course, conduct with international partners such as Chiba University. In this uh, circumstance, we aim for to improve student competency, 
expand university promotion and strengthen our scholarly collaboration. Sensei. So hopefully this uh, activity will strengthen our collaboration and uh, teach our student to make collaboration with uh, another student. How to do communication, maybe Sensei. This is also important thing for our students. Sensei. Uh, and for the last, I would like to once again to thanks to you, Sensei, become uh, because you have a good program with our university. I would like to thank uh, to for the last to Dean of the Faculty of Biology too, for the Doctor Romanus and Doctor Erwin. Hopefully, uh, this program will continue in the next year and will be processed with a good process. I think this is all of for me. And hopefully we have a good program at this morning. Thank you very much. Bilai Taufik Walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Norman. And next session, we will present videos that the activities during the summer program. Please enjoy the videos. Okay, please give applause for the summer program. 
And please kindly now we will take photo together. Please come to forward for the official and of course for uh, the students. Thank you and all of students, please come to forward to take a picture together. Please come to forward, join with uh, all of the officials. Mas Aryono. Finish, not yet. Yeah, di coba, di coba. Yeah, one, two, three. Chiba University. Once more. <laughs> okay, I will uh, count. Summer course, General Sudirman University, and okay. Thank you. Oh, all of the students and the participant, come take a picture together. 
Abdi. <laughs> Ayo, siap. Aduh, oke. Okay. Summer course General Suriman University and thank you. Thank you very much for all of participants in this meeting. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of the meeting, and we would like to say thank you very much to all of the invited guests, all participants, and of course to all committee who supports this program. And thank you for participating, and we do apologize for any inconvenience. And let's we say alhamdulillah together for closing agenda on this morning. Alhamdulillah, alamin. And uh, the next agenda we are continuing by presentation. And I think this is enough to uh, agenda this morning. Thank you, all of the officials. And good morning and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Next agenda will um, presentation and will be moderated by students. Yeah, yeah. Um, before presentation, we have to giving the souvenir from uh, Universitas Jenderal Sudirman to Chiba University. Please prepare Pak Norman to give a souvenir to Professor Sakawa. Pak Norman, foto please. One, two, three. Pak Dekan, Pak Din, Pak Romi, please come to floor. Take photo uh, once more. One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you.
Uh, next, as you know, with the presentation about the results of uh, this uh, support course and will be moderated by Marcel, yeah? Or who? Marcel. Yeah, please come forward to lead this uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning and welcome to all the participants and estimate guests. To the seminar presentation of this event is the first General Sudirman University Summer Course on the Tropical Biodiversity Discovery 2023. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Aditya Marcel Jr., a student from University of General Sudirman. I will be your moderator for today's event. And let's kick things off and bring some energy to our discussion today. Uh, we are delighted to welcome all of you to this event, which provides a platform for participants to showcase the outcomes of their summer course experience. We appreciate your participation and enthusiasm in sharing knowledge and experiences. And today, there is for uh, participant groups of students from Chiba University City, uh, who will present their activities from this program. And we have enjoyed the presentation from the four participant groups. Okay. For the first presentation, we have group one with the topic about botanical garden and museum in Indonesia. For group one, uh, can prepare for presentation, please. Yeah. Hey, please have a seat. Okay, so for the information, uh, the students from Chiba University are uh, coming to two botanical gardens in Indonesia. The first one in Bogorians, Bogor, and the second one is in Baturaden. Okay. Ready, you guys? Okay, for the group one, time is yours. Hello. Uh, we are group number one, and we are talking about uh, botanical gardens in Indonesia. Because of the hot weather, Indonesia has many species on plants. Uh, many of the plants cannot see in Japan, so they seem very interesting for us. We want to tell you the interest point, uh, interesting point of Indonesia's plant.
Well, the most impressive plant in the botanical garden of Tsuginon is the left side picture. This plant is called Euphorbia titima. I have never seen one, so I thought it was an uh, artifact first. I was curious about how this plant is growing because it is growing in zigzags at approximately equal intervals. The nectar obtained from the pink flowers in bloom was sweet. It is rare for this plant to grow this big and flowers in Japan, so I was glad to see it and be able to lick honey. The plant is known as the devil's backbone in English. On the other hand, in fact, its stems resemble ascending. The right side picture is, is a plant called well, so this plant, I recall the Japanese bamboo. Also, the colors were different. The trunk looked just like bamboo, which was impressive. It turns out that the part similar to the bamboo nose is a mark of fallen leaves. It is said to be one of the most beautiful kinds of palms with clear scarlet leaf stalks and axils. The, the English name is Red Ceiling Wax Palm, which is thought to have been given this name because it resembles the color of red wax used to, for ceiling in ancient China. The Japanese name name is Hime Shoujo Yashi, which was given because it resembles the scarlet hair of the imaginary Chinese monster Drosophia, Shoujo in Japanese. Also, the planet plant originated in Borneo. Both of them were named after China. It was interesting. Yes, uh, for connect is not good, so connect is not good, so it's slightly delayed. <laughs> After after the audience to have a
able to see many animal specimens. Uh, upper left is uh, a le left side is a uh, bird, and upper left is a uh, Elan Jawa. Uh, it is a uh, national bird in Indonesia and looks like Garuda. And uh, under left is finches, and upper right fish is siracans. Uh, uh, the fact that uh, the specimen is holotype surprised us. And center is mammals. Uh, left is uh, tiger, uh, jaga, uh, cheetah, something like that. And left is a bones of buffaloes and goat, uh, something like that. And uh, light is reptiles, uh, lizard. It was very interesting to see a lot of specimens of animals very closely. Thank you. Are you waiting for change changing? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. We went to Basra of plants at that eat insects, but uh, I had never actually seen. Surprised to see that there are actually insects in the pots. But unfortunately, I couldn't take the picture of the insect inside, so I can show you now. Uh, I also saw plants with unusual patterns and shapes of the leaves there. For example, this light one. Um, the leaves of the, this plant split themselves into shape through apoptosis. Those unusual plants are sometimes seen in Japan as a forage plant, but I thought it was interesting that such a mysterious and attractive plant grow naturally in Indonesia. Finally, I, this botanical garden was in the forest, so we could see a natural forest of Indonesia. Unlike the forest of Japan, we are, uh, we are pine tree and cereals grow. There are large ferns and plants with big leaves. Therefore, I felt like a forest in the age of dinosaurs with such as a big difference. Finally, uh, we introduced the fruits that we ate in the botanical garden during a this summer course. We ate those fruits, uh, violet, apple, uh, guava, and uh, pepper. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, this is a uh, 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 first right in the flower. Uh, 
<laughs> Bright apple is related to species in, with persimmon. Uh, it has very sweet smell and taste and sticky texture, but different taste from Japanese persimmon. Uh, the gaba had a little smell, but not sweet and tasted like tomatoes. Uh, this is dried gaba. Uh, dried gaba, which I found on the ground, was mellow and smelled like a fine cookies. That taste, that taste is good, maybe. Uh, I ate pepper at the bot uh, Butcher Laden Botanical Garden. The green pepper was so hot just, just that just one bite was enough to numb my mouth. Uh, the red ones were not spicy at all. On the contrary, they were sweet. It was so delicious that I forgot to that I forgot to take a picture. Sorry. Uh, we ate the honey juru of this Europea tijimaloides. It has it has sweet honey juru, so delicious. This flower I don't I didn't eat, but I introduced. Uh, this flower I forgot this name. Sorry, is nakuro nakuro naku. Narcotic. Roasting this flower and smoking, we feel getting drunk during one to two, two weeks. It was surprised being planted in Yuja Road. Japan, there are four seasons, and these seasons able to grow a lot of plants. For example, sakura is one of the most famous plants in Japan. To grow sakura, it needs cold days, cold days so that sakura can grow. In addition, fallen leaves can see in fall season. Uh, come to Japan and see a lot of beautiful plants. You will get surprised. Thank you for listening. Hey, okay. is there any question? Oh, sure. Uh, my name is Imanda Novalia Ramadani. You can call me Imanda. Uh, so for the question, uh, sorry for my English. Uh, you know, after you see all those plants, a uh, few of them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, after you see all those plants, uh, what do you think the most difference between plant in Indonesia and in Japan? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, you guys want to answer now? Thank you for questions. Okay. Uh, difference, uh, difference in Indonesia and Japan. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, plant is big and colorful. Uh, uh, 
in Japan, uh, leaf is usually green, but uh, in Indonesia, uh, leaf is red or yellow, or uh, and uh, sometimes have many holes. Oh, I'm not getting it. So, uh, 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 maybe uh, in the uh, Indonesia plant have more uh, diversity. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for the answer. So yeah. In Indonesia, they said uh, we have a more diversity species and more characteristic than in Japan. Is that uh, is the answer enough? Okay, thank you very much. Is there any question for another uh, student, please? Okay, if there's no more question, uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, we, uh, we, we have uh, heard an inspiring presentation from the group one. Now let's transition to group two. We will share their insight about topic seagrass and coral reef comparison of Japan and Indonesia. Okay, thank you very much for group one. Please have a seat. Okay, so now, yeah, uh, we will have a presentation from group two. So we will have a presentation from the, the group two. Uh, we will share that insight about topic seagrass and coral reef comparison, comparison of Japan and Indonesia. Uh, please come here. Uh. Okay. Hello. Um, uh, we are group two. We will present about seagrass and coral reef. Um, uh, my name is Momoka. Um, he is Hirohane, and he is Takato, and he is Chihiro, and he is Shota and um, our friends uh, Abidi. <laughs> Special thanks. Um, I and Hirokane are first year master's student, and um, Takato and Chihiro and Shota are our second year undergraduate. Um, uh, say, um, oh. Now loading, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. A uh, sea grasses and coral are important parts of the marine ecosystem as habitats and egg-laying sites for marine organisms. Sea grasses also serve as food for fish. In this study, we researched a sea grass and coral reef in Karimun Java Island. Uh, Indonesia. The, uh, sorry. Uh, the uh, seagrass survey was researched in Senobar Star. And the coral reef survey was researched in Alan Alan. Mm. <laughs> um, 
first, I'd like to share with you about seagrass in Japan. Oh, this is the Ministry of Environment Survey of Seagrass Beds from 2018 to uh, 2020. Um, in this survey, the area, the area is measured in three categories. Zoster seagrass and uh, Philosophic seagrass beds and seagrass beds other than Zoster and Philosophic. The distribution of seagrass beds by type shows that Zoster beds were found in all coast areas um, except, the, uh, except the Ogasawara Island coast area. And those beds were also found in the Nansei Island coast area, relatively large clusters and uh, within the coral reef uh, topography. Um, I talk about Zostera. And Zostera mania is a flowing a uh, vascular plant species as one of ma many kinds of seagrass, uh, with this species known primarily by the English name of eelgrass. Do you know eelgrass? Um, eelgrass with cheese rocks, much less used, and referred to the plant after breaking root from the submerged wetland soil. And drifting free with ocean current and waves to a coast seashore. Um, oh, oh seashore. Uh, it is a serene soft sediment submerged plant native to marine environments on the coastline of a northern latitude from subtropical to subpora region of North America and Eurasia. Uh, in Japan, eelgrass is abundant. Uh, however, in recent years, the number of seagrass eating fish and sea algae has increased to such an uh, extent that the ecosy ecosystem has become unbalanced, uh, resulting in rocky shore scorching. Rocky shore scorching is isoyake in Japanese. Eelgrass, uh, eelgrass eating fish and sea urchin have been cited as agar eating animals in Western Japan and in Northern Japan, uh, respectively, um, and the resulting uh, damage to seagrass beds and resulting rocky shore scorching is now a major problem in many areas in Japan. Um, sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> And Chiba University is engaged in eelgrass planting activities. Uh, Andy, hi, Andy, here's Andy. Uh, Andy is also joining in these activities. He does not have secrets, but uh, he is Andy. Um, next, we would like to share with you the result of our research in Kalimunjawa. Now, sorry, uh, now Rodi. Uh, from now, I will introduce the seagrass experiments that we have done in. Okay. Uh, we have done in Se Semara Bazaar, uh, Kalimunjawa.
Okay. And first, I will explain how to measure sea grass. Uh, each group was assigned a start point uh, from which a 10 meter long transect line uh, was uh, set up using a measuring tape. Uh, transect plots were placed along the transect line at 0 meter, uh, 5 meter, and 10 meter, 10 meter points. And the transect plot used in this experiment is a square of 50 centimeter uh, by 50 centimeter uh, divided into 25 equal sections by strings. The total number of species, the number of individuals of each species, and the condition of the seagrass were observed in each plot. The data ob obtained were then tabulated and analyzed. Uh, seagrass identification was based on uh, morpho morphological characteristics, such as size or leaf shape, and number of veins. The results were as follows. Uh, please see figure and on this slide. Uh, the species, uh, Simodosea rotundata, it uh, uh, was dominated in many groups. In particular, the areas of groups two, three, and four uh, had only simultaneous rotten data. Uh, on the other hand, there was uh, another species, uh, Tarosia hemplicae, uh, only in the areas of group one. Overall, we found that simultaneous rotten data was the dominant seagrass species in our study area. Uh, corals are marine very within the class Anthozoa of the the uh, Philan and uh, They typically form compact colonies of many identical individual polyps. Coral species include the uh, important leaf builders that inhabit tropical oceans and uh, secrete uh, calcium carbonate to form a hard skeleton. Uh, polyp birth. Uh, the coral life cycle begins with the birth of the polyp as a single organism. Polyps uh, sec secrete uh, calcium carbonate to from a skeleton. Uh, colony formation. Uh, polyps not only live as single organis organisms, uh, but also uh, form colonies with other polyps of the same species. Uh, this is what gives coral, coral reefs their characteristic three-dimensional structure. Uh, reproduction, corals have two distinct ways of reproducing. Uh, sexual reproduction at specific times Many polyps spawn simultaneously and release fertilized eggs into the sea. The fertilized egg hatches a uh, planula larvae and are uh, carried by currents as they grow. Asexual reproduction. Uh, same corals reproduce asexually, in which polyps multiply uh, through. So, somatic uh, di division and budding, growth and recovery. Uh, Planar larvae uh, settle in the right place, transform into polyps and grow. Polyps grow larger over time and have the ability to form skeletons. Okay, next slide, please. In Japan, Corals can be found from 
from Chiba and Kanagawa prefectures to subtropical islands as far south as southern uh, Kagoshima and Okinawa prefectures. However, uh, the only areas where coral reef landforms are formed are basically south of the Osumi Islands in Kagoshima prefecture. The more southerly the area, the higher the sea water temperature and the more favorable uh, conditions for coral growth. In the waters south of the Osumi Islands in Kagoshima prefecture, uh, sea water temperatures rise due to the influence, influence of warm current and ocean current. And the sea floor topography is dominated by shallow waters and straits. Uh, these topographies provide a suitable environment for coral reef formation. Next, uh, next, I'm going to talk about the method of observation. We did line transect in Arang Arang, Karimunjawa. First, deployed a 20 meter transect line across the coral reef community. Then we swam from uh, here to here with recording, recording by smartphone. <laughs> and observe the coral reef along the 20 meter transect to determine the proportion of coral cover. However, uh, unclear parts in the video of transect were not, not counted as they were difficult to identify accurately. In addition, where multiple units appear to overlap, we counted them as one unit because we don't know the exact number. And the result is shown in this table. The, the corals observed this time, the corals observed this time form fringing reef type coral reefs. And there are many reef forming corals that live symbiotically with Zuzanterai. And many of them are hard corals. It is home to a variety of fish and invertebrates. Okay, I talk about um conclusion of this uh, report. Uh, first, um, as a result of the vision at Semarabis, uh, brown sex seagrass is pretty reminded. Yeah. Uh, we found uh, only two species and uh, only two species. Uh, first, uh, Shimodosir, uh, second, Sarasir. Um, unfortunately, I can't uh, get uh, sa uh, the last year's real, um, real sample. Um, I only observed the Shimodosia real. Uh, Shimodosia, which was the majority of seagrass, uh, is a small seagrass uh, with a length of about 50 centimeters. Uh, uh, we observed the three patches. Uh, but uh, we can find only two species. And uh, does it indicate a lack of diversity? Um, <clears throat> I don't think so. Um, because if uh, we go a uh, little offshore from, sorry, because if we go a uh, little offshore for here, uh, there are many kinds of fish. Um, Moscus and uh, like Chiachin and 
Arcano dance and um, and so on. Oh, oh Shigura stuff, of course. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> So Shimon Dosser, uh, uh, so I think Shimon Dosser is not uh, invading this area. Uh, they play an important role as uh, habitats or uh, spawning grounds and food for the creatures living in, uh, living in this area. And Shimon Dosser is uh, so tough species. Uh, it's a small species, but it's tough. Um, because their roots is intricately um, entwined uh, under under sand. Yeah. And Shimodose can reach to shallow water depths and strong sunshine and vertical force and drying at low tide. Uh, so I figure this species was uh, dominating this water. It's nice niche here. Next, uh, core transit. transit. Uh, this water area, Alan Lang, uh, is dominated by uh, genus Acropora and Oxpora. Uh, but we don't think that's true. Uh, we only use the photo directly from above, directly above here. <clears throat> directly above, uh, and we have counted um, aggregated, um, aggreg aggregated uh, cores by the number of individuals instead of uh, their areas. Yeah. Core also grows on the size of rocks. Uh, we can't count it. Yeah. Um, I feel and um, uh, like, uh, no, for post 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 and so it's stable, uh, very stable uh, corollary, uh, I, I saw here. And uh, they're so beautiful and healthy. Uh, why healthy uh, this core, corollary? Um, in Japanese, uh, it is a problem, um, and cause it, causing a problem and coral breaching. Uh, do you know coral breaching? Um, coral become white, uh, dead and white. A uh, big and uh, turned white, yeah. Uh, but uh, Carmen Jewel Alan Lens, uh, chorus, uh, almost uh, so colorful and uh, not breaching, yeah. So, yeah. good chorus, Very much for the good group. Uh, now let's open the discussion session. Are there any questions from the audience? For
Uh, uh, okay. Uh, my name is Najwa Sekarlarasati, uh, and I do have a question, which is why do you find the coral is uh, stable, like you mentioned before? That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So the question is, why did you stay? So the question is, why did you guys stay if the coral is stable? Uh, can you tell us the reason, please? Uh, most of that coral, um, conscious coral, uh, component co componental coral is uh, called hard coral, half, uh, so hard um, uh, armor, I mean, not, not hard. Hard, hard, <laughs> hard, so hard, so hard, and uh, if we touch it and uh, kick it, uh, so um, broken, yeah, broken. But um, rapid streams uh, or winds, um, they so easy, um, it can't be easily broken, so. Uh, that um, the this image here. Okay, uh, I can answer it. Answer it. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, uh, they said for the the coral when the environment is really strong, it's still uh tough, so it doesn't easily broken something like that, and it seems hard if you touch it. Yeah. How the is the explanation answer your question your question? Okay, thank you. For the next. Oh, mau menambahkan? Okay, sure. Terima kasih atas waktunya. Saya ingin menambahkan jawaban uh, dari pertanyaan uh, Mbak tadi. Uh, sebelumnya perkenalkan nama saya Khairul Abdi, saya mahasiswa inbound dari Universitas Syah Kuala Aceh. Uh, pada kesempatan kali ini saya sebenarnya bergabung bersama mereka di kelompok 2 untuk uh, Coral Reef uh, Observation. Uh, kenapa Coral Reef yang kami lihat itu stabil? Dikarenakan ketika melakukan observasi di line transect sejauh 20 meter, kami menemukan banyak invertebrata dan juga ikan karang yang masih uh, ada di sana, sehingga bisa dikatakan bahwasanya terumbu karang itu masih uh, stabil untuk kehidupan ekosistem yang ada di dalamnya. Mungkin itu yang, yang dapat saya tambahkan. Terima kasih. Oke, okay, thank you Abdi for the more explanation. Uh, okay, is there any question for uh, group two? Please your, uh, raise your hand. It's okay. Okay, so uh, if there's no more question, thank you for group two for the presentation. Uh, please have a seat. Okay. Okay, for the next presentation, there is group three. Please have uh, your place. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so for group three, uh, they will present uh, their knowledge about topic mangroves ecosystem in Indonesia. Uh, you guys ready? Okay, for group three, for group three, time is yours.
Hello, everyone. My name is Angie, and my name is Kotaro. My name is Kai. My name is Tsubasa. Call me Bassa. My name is Yurika. Uh, we, Group 3, are going to explain the mangrove ecosystem in Indonesia. Mangroves are a group of plants that grow in brackish water areas where seawater and fresh water mix in tropical and subtropical region. In Japan, mangroves are found in Okinawa. This is the activity we did. Mangrove observation in Karimunjawa on August 24 and 25, and mangrove observation and planting in Chirachap on August 28. We are going to explain the activities we conducted in Karimunjawa and Chirachap. Okay, uh, first I talk about observation of mangrove in Karimunjawa. Uh, left side picture, uh, on August 24, we had a brief lecture, lecture on mangrove and observed the, the actual mangrove at uh, Menjang and Keshu. And next day uh, on right, uh, right picture, uh, we went to the private mangrove in hotel in Kaimunjawa and identify some species. <laughs> oh, maybe. And uh, uh, first, uh, we we identify several species uh, uh, using uh, leaves, fruits, and flowers. Um, we could identify two species. Uh, this picture, uh, Sonneraria passeralis, uh, and uh, next picture, uh, yes, uh, Akansas Irish Falls. So, uh, both of them had uh, just flowers and bone fruit, so we can do it. Uh, we could do it. And next species, uh, we identified two closely related species, uh, across the tomb specium, uh, specium, oh, sorry, specium, uh, right, uh, left side picture, and across the tomb RM on the right picture. Uh, we identified them based on the shape of leaves. Uh, the difference is that the right side has a uh, pointed leaf tips, uh, right sole, but uh, uh, right side picture has a uh, rounded tips. Next, nice. Left side is Dizopora apiculata, and right, right side is Dizopora mucronata. We just use differences between Dizopora apiculata and Dizopora mucronata, comprehensively based on the size and the shape of the flowers, buds, and leaves. But it is difficult to in di distinguish between leaves by themselves. Dizopora apiculata can be identified by that their buds because they are but they are classic this part formation. However, the bats, Dizopora micronata and Dizopora apicula stylosa are very similar, but we were able to identify it as Dizopora micronata because the length of the propagals on this fruit is slightly longer than those of the Dizopora stylosa. 
and this is the result. We were able to confirm the presence of these species in addition to the those just described. As a result, we were able to identify 10 species and one genus. Among the observation, the problem clonata is seems to be dominant. As for say ops, we can identify say ops decandro or serious tagout for the lack of the proper guard information due to the young trees. However, it is possible to identify serial species by the fact that the proper guards of serial sticandra are longer than those of Tagal. And the proper guards of serial sticandra are at the 90 degree angles like this. While the those of Tagal are pounding down, we can identify that this. This time, I was surprised that I could identify them by minor differences such as the shape of the leaf tips and surprised to find that there were so many species as for as our research was concerned. Okay, now I'll show you about mangrove ecosystem observation in Chirachap. Uh, yesterday, we went to Chirachap and from there, we took a boat to the uh, mangrove forest. Uh, in Kalimunjara, we only identified the species but, but here, uh, we conducted an, another survey using the transect method. Next, I'll show you, I'll explain about it. Yeah, this is outline of transect method. Uh, very simple figure, but this is my best story. Uh, firstly, we installed the transect plot uh, with an area of five times five uh, square meters. Then we observed the total number of mangrove species and the number of individuals of each species in the plot. Then uh, we also measured the stem size, uh, stem thickness using a measuring tape. Uh, this, this is uh, as an uh, indicator for biomass. So this is a, uh, this is a result. Uh, we are able to identify seven mangrove species. Uh, you know, some of the species are already uh, shown. Yeah. Uh, looking at the uh, left, uh, looking at the percentage of the number of individuals. Uh, Seriops Tagal uh, accounts for 5%, but I was surprised to see seven different species in a plot, only five meters square. Uh, right figure is the percentage of total stem thickness per species. Uh, in terms of bio, uh, biomass, uh, oh, occupation by uh, Seriops Tagal has a bit decreased. I found out that in, in this area, uh, above ground biomass is formed by a variety of mangrove species. Uh, but maybe I can't not say this is accurate biomass data, but if uh, we measure the height or uh, other something other factor, this will be a more beneficial uh, data. It is possible to compare with other mangrove area or terrestrial forest. Yeah, this is very important experience. We also planted mangrove yesterday, right? Uh, yes. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No change. Uh, yeah, planting. <laughs> Yesterday, ne? Uh, uh, Brugera, Brugera Gimoriza. Now it's the best season to plant. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Why are we doing this? Yeah. 
The answer lies in the uniqueness of the mangroves. Mangroves have many roles. For example, mangrove saves as important habitats and feeding grounds for fish and birds. When we observe the underwater portion of the mangroves, we were able to observe a large number of fish species, species in both variety and number. Furthermore, mangrove has mangrove have the function of reducing tsunami damage. As you know, in 2004, a massive earthquake occurred off the coast of Sumatra, and many areas, including Indonesia, were affected by the tsunami. However, it has been reported that damage was reduced in areas where there were mangrove forests along the coast. Our country, Japan, experienced a massive earthquake and tsunami in 2011 and is no stranger to such disasters. Oh, we believe that the conservation and maintenance of mangrove is essential to preserve and maintain our rich earth. We should proactively, proactively conserve and sustain mangroves. I'd like to conclude this presentation with this phrase. No mangrove, no globe. Thank you. Terima kasih. Okay, thank you very much for group three uh, for the presentation. Okay, uh, is there any question from the audience to the speaker about this topic? If there is so, please. Okay. <laughs> is there any question for group three? Okay. Please rise and uh, say, uh, say your name, please. Uh, I want to ask about uh, how many mangroves. <laughs> Hello, my name is Rosita Dewi. I'm from uh, biology faculty in General, General Sudirman University. Uh, I want to ask about uh, how many mangroves to be set as a protector from the tsunami? Uh, okay. okay, so the question is how many uh, mangroves uh, coverage that are uh, really useful for uh, prevent the tsunami effect? Yeah. Uh, once again, okay. So, uh, how uh, from you guys, uh, how much uh, coverage of mangrove area to prevent the tsunami effect? Sorry, you mean uh, how how much area? Yeah. How much uh damage by tsunami? Yeah. In Japan? Yeah. Uh, in Japan. Um, in 2011, we experienced a massive uh, earthquake at, um, uh, derived at uh, northern and eastern part of Japan. So um, maybe a half part of Japan, uh, one by four part of Japan damaged. Damaged. Maybe I think. Uh, is it okay? Enough? Okay. Okay. Thank so, you. is the explanation answer the question? No. Okay. So, it's enough. Thank you for the answer. Is there any question from any another audience? Okay, so if there is no question, oh, you want to ask? Uh, you, you want to ask question? No. 
Oke, okay, please. Um, hello everyone, I am Shira Sintanul Faisa from uh, Faculty of Biology, Jindral Sudimun University. I would like to ask in the previous slide, there are 10 different species in Cilacap. My question is, do these 10 species also exist in Japan? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, so she asked uh, uh, that uh, in Cilacap, there is about 10 species that we found. And is there any one of these species are also founded in Japan? Okay, please do it. Uh, uh, there are Misophora genus, um, or Astyosa. Maybe Astyosa is not strong. Maybe. Yeah. So, uh, actually, I don't have uh, the detail of uh, Japanese mangroves, but maybe uh, there are 10 genus of mangrove species in Japan and uh, I, I think uh for us is in Japan and in Okinawa in Japan, and uh, maybe some Abyssinia seniors. Yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> So uh, the answer there is about two uh, genus that found also in Japan. That is uh, Rizophora and? Yeah, uh, may, um, maybe about 10 genus. I have had the 10 genus, so. Oh yeah, yeah. so this, uh, there is about 10 genus that the same in Indonesia. Is there, is there explanation as for your question? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. I will add information uh, regarding to the mangroves. Uh, first, uh, about the uh, mangroves can protect the tsunami, how many person area or how wide the area is depend on the tsunami, of course. But, uh, this based on the experience when the tsunami hits Aceh. Um, there are some many parts that have the mangroves. So the land part is protected by uh, the mangroves from the tsunami. That means uh, tsunami can reduce up to 80% of the power of the tsunami. So it's a very helpful. Uh, regarding to the questions about the uh, species uh, found in Japan, as many species uh, similar uh, that found in Japan and also found in Indonesia, especially in um, Karimun Jawa and also uh, in Cilacap. So, for example, uh, in Japan, they uh, have the Bruguera, Gymnorisa. And they have also the acrosticum speciosum. They have a nipa, but only I saw only one individual nipa in Iriamote. Uh, but they, they found nipa also in Iriamote. And then uh, the many is Avicenia. They have Rizophora, that's uh, Angie mentioned before. Um, but for uh, in Japan, there are many candelia candles. The uh, groups of the Rizopura um, candelia candle, but not found in Java. 
they only born in the Borneo, in Kalimantan, and the eastern part of Sumatra, Iskandalia Gandel. And then uh, in Japan is many. So uh, there are many similarities, but the habitus or the morphological is a bit different. In Japan, it's not to hide, but in Indonesia, they can cruise hide because the climates and the substrate is uh, suitable for mangroves in Indonesia. There are limiting factors in Japan, such as temperatures, light intensity, uh, humidity, and others. Yeah, I think this will add uh, some information. To this. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for Erwin Sensei for the explanation. Maybe there's no more question for group three. So thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, please have a seat. With the great enthusiasm, group three has shared their perspective on topic of mangrove ecosystem in Indonesia. And now let's proceed to group four. Uh, we will deliver a presentation on topic invertebrates, coral fish, and sea turtle. Uh, for group four, time is yours. Hello, uh, we are group four. And we talk about invertebrate and coral fish and sea turtle uh, if found in Indonesian Ocean. First, uh, we introduce about invertebrate found in the ocean. Uh, this is polypita polypita a kind of jellyfish. Uh, this is called ginka krage in Japan. Uh, ginka means coin and krage means jellyfish. So uh, ginka krage means uh, coin like jellyfish. Uh, it looks very beautiful, but it has a poison. So you should not touch if you find this. This is Sergia coelia, a kind of nudie plant belongs to Stogasa. There is a nudie plant uh, which color is very, which has very similar color. Um, 
this new branch name is really a linear data, but this new branch is very similar to that, but uh, these are different species. So we are called where has a uh, black car at uh, the top of tentacle, but Lenelata has orange car top of tentacle. Uh, so Lady Bunch often has a very similar car, so it's too difficult to identify the species. And this is the rear nigra, a kind of medium branch belongs to Nigibranchia. This is called a Kuribo University in Japan. And this nigibranch branch surface is covered with uh, rocks. And this is the Perifera punctulata, a kind of nigibranch branch belongs to Patricia. This is called Uminamikuji in Japan. This nudie branch often find on sea glass three, but it's too difficult to find because it has very thin body and green color. And this is Konas Marorae, yes, a kind of snail. And this is called Nanyo Kromiyashi in Japan. And this snail has very beautiful tail. And this is Lagenas. They are Akanedam, and it has a five flower pattern on its back. This is not just a shell design, but a device to help with breathing. The mass is in the center of the dorsal side, and they feed on small species, small species of organisms. And this is Diadema Setozma. The spins are thin and sharp, and the chips easily break into the skin because the spin has a reverse stink, stinking on their surface and are easily broken. They often remain broken in the skin and the terrible painful. The poison can also lead to paralysis of the muscle and breathing difficulties. And this is Holotori Atra. The entire body is black in color and they are about 25 centimeter long. They have 20 tentacles. They produce mucus from their body surface, which is covered with grains of sand. And this is Stachio Tatira Giantia. They are shorter tentacles than other anemones. They live symbolically with various creatures such as shrimps and crabs. The clownfish, which will be introduced later, also live in symbols with them. Then, I will talk about coral fish. 
First, let's talk about Rabrodis dimitiatus. The interesting thing about this fish is that it can be seen the, in the mouth of other large fish, as shown in the picture. This is not prediction, but rather a uh, cleaning in the mouth. Since larger fish know this, the Rabrodias dimitiatus did not prey upon. Next is Samasoma Kupto. Uh, it is characterized by its bright body color. It belongs to the same family as the Rabrodias dimitiatus I mentioned earlier. Uh, this fish, uh, this unique fish is Euriscus tigras. As you can see, it swims with the head down. It lives by eating zooplankton and other orga organisms. Okay, this fish is Scarus oviferans. This fish has the interesting habitat of wrapping, wrapping itself by wrapping itself in a membrane when it sleeps. Next up is the Scarus frenatus. This fish belongs to the same family as the Scarus oviferans, uh, as mentioned above, but it is a bit smaller. This, uh, this is uh, Abutifta vagenesis, uh, characterized by its yellow body and black vertical stripes. It was the most common fish uh, which I ever seen during my measurements. Next, I will describe three fish at a glance. The first, uh, Poma centras morisnesis. And Neogryphodon oxodon. And Neogryphodon meras. Uh, they are used as ornamental fish because they are beautiful appearance. The scientific name for this fish is uh, Cheatodon octofacilitas, uh, mean, meaning eight line. Uh, it's about 12 centimeters long and it's located in, mainly in the Western Pacific and Eastern Indian Ocean. If it's mainly on coral polyp, polyp Scientific name of this fish is Chartodon baroness. Uh, baroness meaning bar baron by. 
Uh, it is 15 centimeters long, uh, and uh, the body is tri triangular shape and like chart and octo octofacidatus uh, is loc location in most of the Pacific Ocean and the Eastern Indian Ocean. Scientific name for no, scientific name for this fish is Chartodon Bagabundas, meaning wanderer, wanderer. The total length of the fish is 20 centimeters, which is large for the Chartodon family. The tail of adults has a thick black line in the middle. Uh, they are distinct. They are located in the Western Pacific Ocean and the Red Sea. They are omnivores, feeding on uh, algae and polyps and crust, crust seen. Scientific name for this fish is Chalmon rostralitis, uh, meaning long rostrum. Rostrum uh, is a uh, mouth. It, it is 20, 20 centimeters long and has a silver body with five orange lines. Its 
It's located in the Western Pacific Ocean and the Eastern Indian Ocean. It feeds on small clusters. The scientific name for this fish is Amphi Amphipulion Pyridulation, Pyridulion, which means goldfish. The total length of the male is 18 centimeters and that of the female is 10 centimeters. When bleeding male in the group dies and the beer translates from one of the bleeding males into the bleeding females. They are found primarily in the Western Pacific Ocean. The scientific, the scientific name for this fish is Plemnus bioculitus, meaning, um, meaning two, um, bio means two, and culitus is, uh, culitus means song, Total length is 70 centimeter and it's found mainly in the Indian and the Pacific Ocean. Like um, Amphipleon peridileum, sexual, sexual transfer, transition occurs when a bleeding male transfer into a bleeding female when the bleeding female dies. Scientific name for this fish is Amphibolium ocellaris, and its total length is 15 centimeters. They feed on the leftover of the amemones in which they live. This fish is also famous for its appearance in the 2003 film Finding Nemo. Uh we had a turtle release four days ago. Uh, this is a green sea turtle. Green sea turtles are now endangered. Uh, therefore, people are engaged in con uh, conservation activity and releasing turtles into the wild. Uh, Uh, here is a video of the release. That was so cute. Uh, they look so cute to us, but they are uh, struggling uh, to survive. There are many danger. Uh, there are many dangers in the ocean. Uh, only a few few of the newborn turtles survive. The turtles that survive and become adult uh, return to the beach to lay new eggs. Uh, we hope they will grow up and return to that beach. Uh, this, uh, this concludes the presentation of group four. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for group four uh, for the presentation. Is there any question for group four about the topics? Okay, please. Uh, hello, my name is Zia Raizan. Uh, I want to ask about the sea turtle. Uh, from the landing to the beach, 
and laying egg to hatching uh, how many days is it takes to it takes to the eggs to be hatched and the second question is there is any sea turtle species that can be found in japan or not thank you okay uh thank you zia for the question so the question is uh how long since the sea turtle laying uh, it, its egg and then hatching the period of time yeah the first question is how long the the sea turtle is laying their eggs and then hatching and the second question is is there any uh, species that found it in japan then uh, the green sea turtle okay so can you please answer the question Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, please. You can answer the question. We had about uh, three weeks. Uh, they had the egg and three weeks. Uh, maybe, maybe three weeks. Uh, Three weeks. Uh, Three weeks learning at, uh, on the beach. Uh, Japan uh, green turtle also uh, 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 green turtle also Japan, uh, ex exist in Japan. And, and red, red turtles uh, also. Okay. Uh, so the answer is there's about, uh, uh, there is a uh, two species in Japan. And there is a green turtle and the leatherback turtle. Yeah. And for how long? For the period period of time? Three? Three. For the time to hatching. Three weeks. And uh, maybe three weeks. Three weeks. Three. Yeah. Uh, so the estimation is about uh, three weeks. Three? Oh, two. Two, uh, two. two and three weeks. About that. That's correct? Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So this uh, that's the answer. Are the explanation and answer, answer your question? Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any uh, question from another audience?
Okay, seems no. Well, uh, if there's no more question, thank you very much for for uh, for your great uh, presentation. You can please back to your place. Okay, so yeah, it's different. Okay. With this, uh, we are reached to the end of the Chiba University Summer Course Presentation Activity Seminar. Uh, thank you to all participants and speakers for the remarkable presentation. Through this event, uh, we have changed diverse insights from the various topics presented by the four groups. Uh, hopefully, uh, this event has provided inspiration and new understanding for all of us. Thank you for your present and spread participation. See you again in the next uh, event. Uh, good morning and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. For participant and the audience, uh, we already uh, served the food behind, so please, uh, uh, serve yourself. Thank you very much. Di belakang sudah ada konsumsi, silakan bisa dinikmati ya. Also from Chiwa, please there is a meals behind so we can enjoy together. Okay. Thank you very much.